In this episode, we arrive in Mossel Bay, we visit the Cape St. Blaise Lighthouse, and we go shark cage diving. We have a rainbow! And it goes all the way around to the other side of the mountain. We're leaving Port Elizabeth, headed for Mossley. Good morning, no, no, good afternoon from the south coast of Africa. We're on the southern portion of the continent, headed towards Mossel Bay. Yesterday was a bit rugged. We had some bad weather that we had to wait out at Port Elizabeth and it was slower to pass by than we thought. So we didn't leave until about three in the afternoon and it gets dark about six. So, and the waves were big swell with chalk on top, which makes for bathtub motion which makes for seasickness and uncomfortable people. Except for Vince and Ford, who have done this a billion times, they were perfectly comfortable. Um, John and I, however, <laughs> not so much. Yeah, it was one of those moments like, uh, okay, what have I done here? But as you see, today is gorgeous. So I did get some sleep last night. I did my watch this morning from six to nine. And then I went back downstairs, went back to sleep, and got up about 1.30. So, um, the guys are out setting up the spinnaker. So, that just kind of, for me, accents some of the highlights and then some of the lowlights of, because last night I was thinking, we can't do this, <laughs> but it's, it's all good. And the seas are beautiful. And we are doing 5.8 knots in 10 knots of wind, which will come up when the when the Jennifer goes up. So there's your update. It is huh, Tuesday, I believe it's a Tuesday. I'm not sure. Sailing with the Jennifer up when the wind and the waves are at your stern is my favorite type of sailing. It's so peaceful. So here's a moment for you to enjoy the same peace and serenity. And just like that, the wind changes and gets a little too strong. So all that work putting the spinnaker up has to now be undone. her down is a little bit like wrestling a cat while the ground underneath you pitches and rolls. Once she's down, it's time to stuff her back in the bag. And that's a bit like stuffing 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag.
Mossel Bay has more sharks per capita than any place else. I don't know how they count that, but that makes me want to go shark diving. More great white sharks. I have not seen any, any sign of any great whites. It's probably a, probably not a common thing to see one on the surface. I don't know. But here we are, the sun is setting. We're heading west, on the very southern tip of the continent of Africa. When, we'll probably be in Mosul Bay for a day or two, I'm not sure. But when we get a weather window, Cape Agulhas is next. So, here I go to my watch. Mossel Bay is located midway between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth, which is now also known as Gabartha. Mossel Bay is the beginning of the scenic drive called the Garden Route, and it's a holiday destination with beautiful beaches and great surfing. There is no longer a yacht club or any kind of official marina, so we wrapped it up with another vessel at the end of the Vincent Jetty. So good morning from Mossel Bay, South Africa. There was just a dolphin a minute ago before I ran and got my phone. Now of course he's nowhere to be seen. Here you can see how we rafted up to the fishing vessel at the end of the cement jetty. To get on and off, we had to climb over the railing, into the stern of the boat next to us, then climb onto those big rubber tires, and then up onto the jetty. It was an exercise in timing because the boats were constantly moving. So in order to get to shore, we have to climb over the El Marlin. like this. get John going, but I'll get you going. Huh? You can pull him from this side. So we went out for a walk today. We're headed to the lighthouse. And that is just, it's just cool. Very cool. So, we're still in Mossel Bay awaiting the storm coming day after tomorrow and we just inquired about shark cage diving keep your fingers crossed that comes to fruition climbed up from down there and we went the way Google Maps told us, actually Apple Maps, and we came up the backside and had to kind of rock climb. Go for it. Our lighthouse was built in 1864. It was built by the British and its purpose was to sign up and protect all the boats who would come in the waters. If you go up, you will see the light. Please stay what turns at night. You can touch the light, take, take photos of light. Please just don't send that light for me. Every light has a clock 
and if that clock gets broken, it can give an inaccurate um, signal to the boats on the water. Please look at the ingenuity it took to build this light. This light takes 1.34 million candle lights and it pushes it 45 kilometers over the ocean. There's two steps of this wooden steps. On top, there's a steel spiral step with a, um, with a rail and uh, it's still original from 1864. And the lighthouse master needed to go 24 hours a day up and down on the stairs to sign up all the boats who would come in the waters. Please take your time, there's no time limit, and take a lot of photos because this lighthouse is one out of 45 in the South African West Coast. This is a Cape fur seal, also known as a South African seal. They're not true seals, they belong to the eared seal family and are the largest of the fur species. They feed on shoaling fish, squid, octopus, sharks, and rays. They can dive to depths of over 200 meters, that's about 650 feet, and hold their breath for up to seven and a half minutes. We often see them sleeping on the docks and lazily grooming themselves like this as they float around. They sure are entertaining. Sometimes we startle each other as I step outside of the canvas or turn a corner on the dock. The next day, we boarded this boat for a shark diving adventure of a lifetime. This is the cage we are about to get into. That blue foam keeps it floating, and as you can see, it's pretty beat up, which looks to me very much like shark bites. We anchored right in front of this exposed rock covered in Cape fur seals. I'm thinking it's a great white shark buffet. What does that consist of? It's sardines and seawater. So this is the cage. Um, once we get sharks, we'll put this, drop this into the water. And we'll get everyone suited up with wetsuits. They are all according to size. Um, this fits up to six people at a time. Um, a little about the cage. Um, as you can see, there are dents. Um, it's not because the sharks are trying to get to you, it's just because sharks don't have brakes and sharks don't have hands, so they can't stop themselves. Um, all it really is, is they come try to get the bait that he has, and then they get a little close to the cage, and obviously they can't stop themselves, so kind of just <laughs> slam into it. Um, it seems scary. It's, they're just bumping into it, and it's in the way. It's not that, like they're trying to get in. Um, with that being said though, there's inside bars and there's outside bars. Make sure you hold on to the inside bars because obviously the sharks hit the outside bars. That's for the sharks. This is for you. Um, keep arms, legs, everything inside the cage. Um, the sharks are protected, so don't try to touch them at all. If anyone, if you do see that, we will have to go back. From this moment on, you will now be known as Shark Bait. Shark Bait! <laughs> shark diving industry is very regulated by the government of South Africa. There are detailed specifications for the cage and each operator must be properly licensed. The younger people working this boat are biology students from the U.S. who were here in South Africa for a month or two as interns to study sharks. We wore five millimeter wetsuits without any weights, so we were very buoyant. Down, down, down. 
For me, it was difficult to push down and stay underwater while trying to keep the camera steady. I wasn't tall enough to reach the foothold at the bottom of the cage to steady myself. At the time, I was disappointed that we didn't have scuba gear so we could stay underwater. I later learned that the bubbles and the sound of the gear would scare the sharks away. After the dive, we were cold and hungry. The staff recommended a traditional South African restaurant called Kai for Bry. It's located just across from where we exit the port. As the name implies, it's a barbecue place. Of course, we ordered the meat platter, and it was delicious. Two meat platters and two beers were all less than $20, tip included. So this statue represents the life of Nelson Mandela. And I'll point out some things to you. The sun is in just the wrong place, but it starts on the bottom. It's like a timeline with his birth and then things that he, in his life, things that he did and are known is known for. And then let me see if I can, if I can zoom in enough. This one is, you can see the little jail cell in Robin Island. And this got his name when he was president. Everything from turnbuckles, shovel heads, picks, pickaxes. Here we are with our trolley on the way to buy groceries. Being rafted up to another boat added an extra challenge of loading groceries onto our boat. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right Trip home with our diesel Early the next morning, we headed out. Thank you for watching, and please join us next time as we make it past Cape Agulhas and around the Cape of Good Hope into Hout Bay. No limit to what we can do.